Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it seems that the technical problems are solved. So good evening to everybody, and welcome to this uh, first class of the course on uh, ambient intelligence, technology, and design. And I'm Fulvio Corno, as the slide says. And uh, I'd like to spend uh, the first hour or so of our time uh, describing you how the course is organized, uh, uh, about the exams, about the topics, uh, and all the stuff that is nice to know at the beginning. Uh, so this is the basic information about uh, this course. You should know most of it already. So we have six credits to spend in this semester. It will be six uh, strange credits, I guess. I will explain you how. And um, uh, the language would be our best try to, to be English. Um, the main information that uh, you need to, to save for today and to tattoo if you want it uh, is this address. So all the information that uh, uh, is related to the course, all the materials, all the links, uh, all the schedules, and uh, whatever, is uh, stored at the web page at the site that is available at that address, uh, which looks like this, more or less. Hmm? And uh, it's, uh, right now, it's nearly empty, but it will grow during the course. And in particular, in the materials section, you have a, a copy of the slides that I'm using now and the ones that uh, I will be using in the next hour. And uh, in general, all the material you need uh, is in this page. We don't use the Portale della Didattica. Uh, we like better this approach, which is more open. Everybody can see and download. Uh, we don't need any password or any strange login to get to the material. Uh, another uh, useful uh, feature of this website uh, uh, we'll come to that later, but in the log section, you have the list uh, of all the classes uh, that are planned for the scores. Of course, for the next uh, one or two weeks, uh, this uh, is very, should be very accurate, but uh, uh, of course, maybe we'll need to change something in the future. But in any case, you're be, you are able to plan also your attendance to the course, you know the topics, uh, you know the type of lecture that uh, you have in advance. Okay? We'll come back to this uh, uh, when we go to the timing. OK, so how, uh, what are the topics I want to, to deal with you, to discuss with you? Always first is the, the goal of the course. Huh? What do we want to achieve? And uh, what kind of contents we try to, to work with you in the course? How we organize that? And it will be uh, a bit uh, unusual, I said, the resources uh, for the material and the, all the study material. And then a focus about uh, the final part uh, and the essential part of the course, which is the exam, how it is organized, uh, and uh, look at what happened last year, that was the first year of this course, uh, and what will happen, hopefully, or what's the direction we are going to, um, to follow this year. Okay? So this is the, the outline for the first, uh, first hour or so. The goal of the course is to uh, design and realize hmm, some uh, portion, some part uh, of an environment uh, that uh, is designed to enrich, to improve the user experience. So ambient intelligence, we'll, we'll define it later better, but uh, the idea is that the, uh, the ambient, the environment, uh, helps you, uh, is intelligent enough uh, to help the users of the environment, your house, your class, classroom, your uh, bus, your uh, building, or whatever, the environment will be more intelligent and will help you hmm, in some way. Uh, this is the, the final goal, uh, learning the approach to design such systems. And we'll see they are, they are complex systems. They need a lot of uh, different technologies hmm? uh, to, to cooperate, to be designed around the single goal, which is the user needs. Hmm? Uh, we want also to learn about designing 
some way starting from the users or mainly from the features that the users want to have instead of uh, designing starting from the technology. Because nowadays we see a lot of bottom-up design when we have a technology and we try a way to use it, okay? And uh, we come up with a product which is maybe technically extra cool, but nobody is willing to use it uh, or a lot of people are uh, so we try to go the other way around, starting from what are the, the features, the requirement, the characteristics of the system that, would, that the users would love to have, and then later on deciding what kind of technology. This is, of course, it's, it's harder, because to be able to select the best technology, you must more or less manage many different technologies and then go the right path uh, towards the one that fits best, this specific project. Huh? In the bottom-up case, you know your own technology and you try to apply it everywhere. Hmm? Um, we learn uh, uh, so to manage different uh, types of solutions and also to interface and interact with real existing components uh, for home automation, for building automation, and so on. So in the labs, uh, we'll not build something from zero, but we'll try to use uh, devices that exist on the market and that can be used in real settings that are the official devices uh, that you can find in two houses, into buildings. We learn how to interact with them and to build our features using the components. So we are not uh, a course in which uh, the focus would be to design a sensor or design a switch or a lamp or something like that, but how to integrate existing sensors, switches, actuators, lamps, and so on. Hmm? Uh, so the, the goal is actually to, to try these methodologies, these, uh, let's say, ideas that we are developing on a simple system. So we are not the time or the resources to build a complete house or environment or building, uh, but we try to, to work small, but following the, let's say, correct uh, um, design process. Um, we'll come later to these uh, definitions. Uh, for now, I just want to highlight the last uh, row, which is uh, in, in red. So the goal of all of this uh, is to enhance the occupants' experiences. Okay? So people would be happy to live in a system with some kind uh, of uh, uh, ambient intelligence. Hmm? A system that is, is, is not nice to have, maybe is not so fancy, but helps you, uh, your experience while occupying the space. So I try to keep these words in, in, in mind uh, when we'll later talk about uh, uh, the work groups and uh, all the practical stuff. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to have users, occupants uh, of, a, of a space that are, let's say, uh, let's say happy because uh, the, the system helps them live or use it better. Hmm? Um, and this involves a lot of layers because we will we, we learn, we'll have to learn to switch uh, talking about what the users want, want uh, and what the application does, what the user interface is, uh, down to what uh, the, what's the protocol for switching on the device or for quitting a sensor. So we we'll level, we'll need the, to be able to manage different levels. Hmm? So we, you, you will, uh, of course, uh, mm, let's say. Uh, put together everything you learned so far in the, in, in the programming uh, uh, and in the computing arch architecture courses, uh, and you learn a lot more uh, to be able to manage all these levels. Uh, if, if you think at the user for, about the user, the user don't care what is behind that. It's our job as engineers to hide all the complexity and give the user a good experience. Hmm? What, uh, how we say, <laughs> Uh, define the contents uh, of the course for reaching this goal. Uh, well, first, uh, in, that will be for, for today or for this week, uh, again, the main definitions, uh, what's ambient intelligence, uh, what kind of application you can create, and so on, J just for giving us some, some background uh, and some definitions. Hmm? I think it's the only theoretical lecture in all the course, this one. Uh, and then we learn how to set up a process for designing a system. Hmm? 
So uh, I will, we will fight against you, against your will to open an editor and write code. Yes, the code will come, but not the first day. Okay? We will need to think about the system, to design it, to share, uh, to make it explicit, and then develop according to our methods and tools uh, that uh, we will learn to use together. Hmm? And of course, uh, in this, we'll learn some specific technologies. Uh, among the millions of possible technologies in this course, we've chosen a small set uh, that is manageable in the labs uh, and is manageable in the time that we have. Uh, so we'll talk about Python, we'll talk about uh, web development, uh, about uh, 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 um, some home gateways, and so on. Hmm? But it's, it, it, they will come, OK? So various technical topics uh, that will uh, uh, just appear during the course, and uh, and we'll say together learn to do some rapid prototyping. So we, we don't want, we don't claim to have at the end of the course a, a product, something that is ready to sell the market. We have we'll have a prototype, something that will be good to show that our idea, our proposal is good. Hmm? It's convincing. Uh, and all of this uh, will be uh, developed through group work uh, that will uh, use, will employ many hours of the course. Uh, so just plan for spending many hours, uh, uh, and uh, in more detail in a minute, uh, on doing this uh, uh, work group. So we'll try to put together some, let's say, theory or some general approach how to do things, mainly, with some technologies some software technologies, some languages, some libraries, some hardware components, uh, and some practice. So working together in a project towards a single uh, goal, which is not so easy as it seems. Hmm? Uh, so we, we work in the intersection of these three uh, big domains. Uh, the approach, uh, of course, is mixing all of this and trying to giving you the tools for completing the, uh, the, your project. Hmm? Uh, the tools, both uh, technical information and both uh, methods of work. Hmm? Uh, we'll, um, we'll try to insist on uh, lab work, uh, working in the laboratory together, giving you feedback, uh, uh, checking your work uh, at uh, a regular time intervals. Every now and then, you will have to submit something. We will check it. We will say nasty things about your work, not about you, uh, and, uh, and uh, also doing some hands-on experience or work uh, in the lab, in the classroom together, and so on. Hmm? So it's, it's a lot of uh, uh, maybe practical issues, but always try to keep in mind that they are in, in, a, in a framework of uh, uh, design methodology. Hmm? Uh, never forget uh, about uh, we, the goal that we want to reach, having a working prototype, and the way we want to reach it, uh, with a process that guarantees, let's say, at least uh, the, um, the, the rational choice of different uh, uh, design steps. I, I'm after at this point because I still don't have the examples to, to give you, but uh, it will be much more uh, uh, concrete than this. Um, okay. How, how do we organize all of this? OK, first of all, uh, the people. We have uh, four persons that are mainly involved in this course. One is me. The other two persons are uh, sort of hiding in the last row there. Please stand up. Uh, the one on, on my left is uh, Dario, and the one on uh, uh, my right is Luigi. Hmm? So we are the three teachers of this course. We, you will see us uh, uh, spinning around in the classes and in the labs and, uh, and whatever. OK. Uh, and plus, we will have one, uh, one help, which is a student uh, from last year courses uh, that uh, will help us in the labs. So like in the, in the normal, in the normal uh, say student help that you have in the labs. Hmm? Um, so uh, four persons that in different times will give you information, will give you feedback, will point out uh, mistakes, will give you suggestions, and so on. Hmm? This is the team. Um, the schedule is somewhat strange. OK. Uh, we have been lucky enough 
to have four slots in the calendar. You know that for a, a six credit course, uh, usually you have three slots. And actually, we need to use only three of these four slots. Uh, but since the hour is, uh, say, in the night times uh, of, the, of the day, so after 5.30, the rooms, the classrooms are almost free. So they, they, they told me, OK, the classroom is free, so if you want to use it. Uh, and so we have these four slots. Uh, and we will play a lot with this. So every week or so, we will change the way we use these slots. Uh, they are not equivalent. In the Monday time, we have the choice of coming into this classroom or in the lab, in the Ladispe lab. I hope everybody knows where it is. Okay. Um, so depending on the week, uh, we will be here or in the lab. Most of the times, these hours, Monday at 4, will be in the lab. But you see on the website, uh, day by day, what we are going to do. Uh, the second time, uh, uh, we use either the lab or the room. In some weeks, uh, we will not have lectures here. When we don't have lectures here, you, we know that the, the lab, the LADISPE, is free and is booked for this course. So every time we don't, do not have lectures, uh, you can use the lab there and it is reserved for this course in the Monday afternoon. You can always access the lab also in other times when it's not booked by other courses, uh, but at least on the Monday we know for sure that nobody else should be there. Or at least if it's there, we can walk them away. Um, the Thursday will be in another classroom, 3i, okay, in the, in the hall there. And uh, um, again, we will use practically always the hours at 4 o'clock uh, and sometimes uh, the hours at 5.30. So not, not, all the week, or not, not every week we will use the hours at 5.30. The nice part about uh, this uh, day, the, the, um, this room, actually, is that there are a lot of plugs, uh, you know, these classrooms, uh, in, the, in the desks. And, uh, so, uh, we will try to use those days, uh, not every week, but uh, th they will be the day in which we try to do some more practical experience uh, where you can bring your own computer and you can work uh, on exercises. Since we have the plugs, you can work uh, freely without, uh, say, having a lot of cables uh, uh, running around. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are, as I said, these are the general ideas. Uh, every week uh, we'll have a different schedule. The lab is the most important part of the course. Everything else, uh, nearly, is uh, aimed at enabling you to do your lab work and your group work. Hmm? Uh, and the hour, so the lab contains uh, some, uh, say, a sample of different materials, different devices. Uh, so we don't want to have one single project that everybody does. We want to give you the choice of what projects you want to do, because everybody has their own uh, ideas or preferences, or uh, maybe since you were a child, you always had this dream in mind, and we want to make you uh, transform this dream into reality. And so we we'll try to have different types of technologies available in the lab, not much of them, but uh, it should be enough, uh, and so you can use it there. Uh, the, the hours, the planned hours in the labs, are more or less split in two parts. In a, in some hours, we will give, we will do a say classical lab exercise in which we, we give you an exercise to do, and in the hour and a half or so, you will try to solve it, okay? To program, to implement, to interface, or whatever. The other time, we'll call it a supervised work group, and this will be the norm, uh, the normal uh, setting in the second half of the course, more or less. So at a given point during the, the, the schedule, you will have your own project. You know what kind of objective you have to reach. And we want you to work on that, and we want to assist you while you're working on that. So there will be hours in the lab where we will be present, and uh, you can work in the lab, ask questions, show us uh, stuff and things, and, uh, and so on. So working 
in the hour, we will, we will use the, the hours of the course for working with you. Okay? Don't miss the chance. OK, um, so this leads us to a sort of a, a skewed schedule, something strange, where I try to, uh, these are the 14 weeks uh, in the course, in the semester. Uh, I try to group the hours by the classes, actually traditional classes, uh, where we, uh, we, we explain stuff. Exercises, when we do something together, either in class or in the lab, but exercises that we propose and we do. We do and uh, group work, so the hours that, that are in the schedule that will be devoted to the group work. And as you see, if you try to do the sum by rows, you see that this sum decreases. So we plan the last two weeks uh, to have only the, to give you all the free time to do your, to finish, to complete your uh, group work. And in the last six weeks, uh, we'll have no actually new classes, no new topics. We, we close all the, more or less, everything you know at uh, week eight, more or less. And so that then you have just practical exercises and, uh, and song and experience in the lab. Of course, uh, for having this, uh, say, additional time at the end to work uh, towards your project, uh, we need to pay something. We need to pay a higher number of hours in the first half of the course. OK, so it's not uniform. The number of hours uh, will be high at the beginning and will more or less decrease toward the end. And also, it will shift from theory classes to exercises to lab work uh, during the time. So this is a sort of a diagonal uh, way of using the time. This is new. It's an experiment for this year. We hope uh, it will uh, uh, work out to be successful. Hmm? The goal, of course, uh, is to enable you to have your work finished uh, by the end of the course. Mm -hmm. Since we know that there's, there are an, a number of persons here who are uh, Erasmus students or coming from uh, outside of the Polytechnic, it will be difficult for them to give the exam in September. And so we'll try our best uh, to put you in a position to give the exams uh, in, 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 in June or July. OK. Enough about the course, no, no not enough, but uh, for the moment. And some words about you. So this is a chart uh, which is not correct, because uh, in, during the weekend, uh, five new students just uh, uh, popped out in the portale, so I didn't have time uh, to update this chart, but more or less should be. Uh, so this is the distribution of students in the different uh, uh, type of degrees. We see that. Uh, uh, the, the majority, I think it's not 50 percent, but uh, it's, the, it's the model uh, distribution it are from uh, computer science, uh, and next uh, we have electronics and uh, telecommunications, uh, something like cinema, and the, in the other groups are one or two persons. The group labeled with other <clears throat> is uh, where the par portal didn't tell me anything. It's, uh, I assume it's more, uh, mostly international students. Uh, coming here for the, and taking this course. So there's quite a, a mix and a variety of persons. We need to, to take this into account and also to try to exploit this diversity. You have received a, a survey some weeks ago. Um, not everybody, but most people uh, have answered that, just to give us uh, uh, an idea about uh, uh, what you know or what you feel you know, uh, which is not always the same, uh, about the main technical topics uh, that we, we need to use in the, um, in the course. So the first question was, uh, what are your skills about programming in general? And uh, yeah, this is the, not at all. Some, somewhat average, uh, yes, and very much, or something like that. So this is the distribution. Huh? So the majority of people say, OK, we're programming. I can do it. Hmm? And not a master. Uh, nobody said uh, the maximum. But um, this is something we can do. And then about specific topics in programming, we see these sort of shapes. Hmm? 
So uh, the majority is, I know nothing about that, hmm? the blue column. And uh, the red one is that, okay, I heard that in the corridors, and then we go uh, with, uh, with smaller groups that maybe have already some experience. Hmm? Um, don't worry, I mean that these are topics that are part of the, of the schedule, part of the topics we deal. Um, web technologies are fundamental for linking things together today. Uh, mobile development is mainly for user interfaces. Uh, we'll see how much time to devote to this topic depends on the kind of projects, because maybe there are some topics where only one project uses that, and maybe some topics that many people will, uh, will, will use, so we'll try to use extra time or more, more uh, exercises or and so on on some of these topics. Huh? We'll, we'll see as we go. Uh, these two bottom charts are, seem strange, say, what is source control? So uh, it's not a, language, a programming language. No? It's, uh, it should be the normal way of doing uh, software development. So you will never save or work, uh, save your work or in general work on your computer. Okay? Uh, you must always assume that what you are doing is something shared with other people. You cannot have your work, your files, your programs on your computer. Because otherwise your coworker, your collaborator will not have the latest version. And you cannot send uh, via email the files to be updated every hour or whatever. So there are techniques, there are tools for keeping a, a shared copy of the sources of the project that is accessible, uh, accessible to all the people working on that, uh, that they can update, then ca they can get the latest version. We have all the history of changes and so on. And so nobody should be worried about where is the latest version of the program and uh, all my I, I did something wrong, uh, let's go back to yesterday's that were working, or would it have changed? Or my computer just broke and I lost all the work. Huh? We are not engineers if we rely on a single machine working well. Hmm? So we, this will be the way in which we work in this course. And, all, uh, and just to force that every assignment that you uh, that you have to, to give back to us every submission will be in these source control systems. Uh, about social requirements is uh, something that we'll spend some time to do a very short version of uh, software engineering courses just to help us uh, to reason about uh, what the so software does or should do before starting to implement it. Okay, just to, to help us reason about the, the requirements before starting to code. So these are topics uh, uh, that are needed for the methodology, for the method of work. About programming languages, we have a similar set of shapes. Um, we see that um, nearly everybody is at the same, same level about Python which is good because it's the language we are going to use in the course, so everybody is at level zero, except these three people that will be asked to leave the room. Um, no, and, uh, and the same more or less for the other languages. Hmm? It's nice that uh, many of you are confident with C, and some also mentioned C++ and Assembler. We'll never touch this in this course, hmm? uh, so that you can learn something new, that's good. Okay, uh, the last question, no, uh, the last but one question that I asked was about work, work group, because uh, actually it's the, it's the core of this course, working in groups. Uh, I say that's a never to good experience of uh, having already worked in some groups, and the question was uh, what is the best size of the group that you imagine? And the answer ranged between uh, three and four. Actually, the majority was four, but also three. You see the average is 3.5, uh, uh, as your suggestion is. Hmm? 
So we will take this uh, and we say that for this course, the course, the, the groups uh, should be of three or four people, okay? Because you decided that. Um, okay, this is just to uh, have a knowledge about the class, uh, and so you can start looking and peering at each other, say, well, where is the mechanical engineer? Or um, we will we will have time to know each other directly. Okay, about the resources, the materials. Um, the main uh, reference is, of course, the, the website of the course that they're giving you at the beginning. You will find everything there. Lecture slides uh, in PDF, uh, uh, all the material for the labs, for the text uh, of the, the assignment, the solutions, all the, um, let's say, the norms or every requirement for the exam, for the working group, all the deadlines, everything should be there. Hmm? Um, if something is not there, just remind us because it's our our intention is just to everything that we say, everything that we show uh, should be there as a reference. Hmm? Um, officially, we also post uh, some news, uh, some here and uh, in the, the main page of the course. Uh, we have this latest news, and we post communications there. When the communication is really urgent or important, we will also send you an email or an SMS uh, when maybe there's a change in the lectures or something on the classes or something like that, uh, we'll also send you. But in general, uh, when we, you know, uh, I don't know, some news like, okay, the exam rules are being redefined, we just put a notice there and we'll, see, we'll say that in the class also. Uh, this, so this is the main, uh, say, official place where all the information about the course goes. Uh, the only reason you have to go to the Portal della Didattica is to s download or see the video lectures, okay, that we are recording thanks to this uh, uh, great equipment. And uh, uh, so you know the usual couple of days, maximum delay, you will have the lectures there and you can download and see them. Hmm? Uh, after, at the end of the course, we will probably also publish them generally available on the website. Uh, but during the course, uh, you will have uh, to log in, and only only after you can see the material. Hmm? We also have uh, extra resources. Many of you already have noticed that we have uh, a Facebook group. And if you want, uh, you may join it. Uh, it's, no, it's not only for students of the class, but also for other people who could, that could be interested in, in these topics. Of course, we'll also push some maybe news or notifications or whatever. We will try, uh, because since we are not, uh, say, forced or, or obliged to have, to have or to use Facebook, uh, you we will never send uh, any communications only on Facebook. Okay, if, if it's something official, we will, it, will also go, it will also go on the, on the course website. But for many, for quick information, okay, oh, did you see this news or did you see this video? Uh, it's, it's very handy. It's much handier than uh, posting a news and so on. Hmm? So if you want, you, you can ask to join. We will have uh, we, okay, uh, uh, The slides and the videos will also be posted, but after the course, so we, we, don't, we don't need to, to be uh, concerned now. Oh, it's a group, so everybody can post the Facebook group. So if you have ideas, questions, uh, some, something to share, uh, which is not your birthday party, but something that is relevant to, uh, to the course, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, about the study material, well, mm, as hard as we can try, we can find any textbook uh, available for the, for the whole course because it's a very specific topic, and we try also to, to, to stay ahead, uh, and uh, every year say to get new devices uh, that, that are just uh, out, uh, so uh, to, to update also the technical uh, devices that we have in the labs. So uh, mainly the material that we have are slides and videos, but uh, in, for some parts we, can, we have linked some, for example, on, for the Python part, there is a lot of materials already available. We, on the website, of the, we still link some books, some, some tutorials that may help you. So on some specific topics, we'll try to give you some pointers, uh, but for the rest, just try to, to follow what we do in the, in the classes and, and in the labs. Hmm? 
Um, sometimes, uh, okay, we won't have much time to do that really, but uh, uh, one thing I, I, I would really suggest you to do is to learn to read uh, technical documents, to read the specifications, to read the standards when applicable. Uh, because in many times uh, you, we find uh, tutorials, we find short version, we find something that, okay, just copy and paste this, but we miss uh, what is the reasoning behind things. Uh, uh, I think about what, when we are doing something about uh, web technologies, there's a lot of standards that are there. They are easy to understand also, they just need uh, to sit down and read them and instead of taking the shortcut and uh, say, copy and paste that. Hmm? Because in the long, uh, it will not uh, give you enough flexibility to, to do what you want. Hmm? Um, okay, so I think more or less uh, uh, the methods, uh, I, I, I try to, to say that in two different ways, should be clear, I hope, uh, other, otherwise you will ask me questions. Let's come to the real uh, hard part of this introduction, which is talking about the exam. So, Having said that the goal of the, pay of the course is to enable you to uh, design and implement a prototype of a really working ambient intelligence system, that was what we had in slide number one, the goal of the exam is to assess if you actually were able to design and implement. I'm stressing design. It's not just, uh, oh, I put together something then that works uh, at least uh, when the moon is not so high in the, uh, in the sky, okay? Or it works, but I don't know really why or how. And it's, it may happen, of course, but uh, it's just uh, implementing. We want to see design and implementation. Maybe an implementation which is uh, smaller, has less features, but these features are well thought out, are well designed, are well motivated. Okay, doing a, a good work and not a lot of uh, stuff put together more or less uh, in, in a way that, 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 that doesn't break but it's ugly to look at, okay? Uh, multiple skills and disciplines are needed, so you need uh, something, that is somebody that is good at programming, somebody that is good at organizing ideas, uh, somebody, somebody that is good uh, at imagining interfaces, uh, someone which is good at understanding what a sensor does and so on. So uh, that's why we, we really, really like the idea of having groups and, on every, or, and of having people of mixed uh, let's say background in the course. Hmm? Um, and since uh, you are, I hope for everybody of you, close to the graduation and some return to their home in the, during the summer, uh, we try uh, to, let's say, force you to work during the course as much as possible. So not uh, starting to study at the end of the lecture, but starting to study from tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and so the exam and the work group are actually the same. Hmm? Uh, the exam is doing the work group and presenting it at the end. Um, at the beginning, you will uh, form, uh, will, I will, I'll, send, I'll show you the process in a second. Uh, you will form a group, different groups, sorry, and choose a project to work on. And in this project, you will have several deadlines in which it will ask you to upload some documents uh, which will be more and more detailed, and then start coding, uh, and then uh, preparing presentation, a website, and the prototype, and the demo, and the presentation, and so on. Uh, everything will be scheduled during the, during the weeks of the course. Um, the topics uh, are proposed by the group and approved by the teachers, I mean. So uh, you may, once you form your group of friends, uh, start thinking about some idea in the topic that uh, we will propose you, and then you will submit these ideas to us, and we say, okay, this is good, this is lacks something, you need uh, to increase this, or this is too big, or this is too small, or this has, has nothing to do with this course, or, hmm? and, and so that we can come together to a set of ideas. Uh, uh, more or less we will have, uh, by counting 
the, the groups uh, something like 20 different projects, hmm? which is a strong number to manage. Hmm? But uh, we can do it. Um, OK. So this is the process. Among, in this week, uh, we will work on the project theme definition. So we will launch a theme for this year. You already know what it is, because it's in the last, ver in the last question of the survey, if you remember it. Uh, we launch a theme, OK, this year, all the projects uh, should be related to this general theme. This week. You have some time to think about it. And uh, uh, in, on the 19th of March, so that we see you more than two weeks, uh, or no, exactly two weeks uh, from today, 17th. What's wrong with that? Anyway. Uh, uh, there will be a discussion where you can present your ideas uh, and uh, uh, your groups. The uh, idea for this date is that uh, the, what you propose should be nearly final or so. So in these weeks, uh, uh, you are not uh, alone. You can start discussing with us uh, about the ideas, and we'll give you a, a Google document to fill with the, with the size of the group and with the, the title that you propose. In that day, we will check your ideas and see whether this group is too small or too big or some person is along or something like that, uh, just to, to finish uh, the, the, um, the assignments. And then, uh, by the next day, you will have to, say, freeze the submit officially the group composition. And up from that information, we will create you all the online repositories for storing the code for publishing a website and so on. Hmm? We cannot do it before because we don't want to change it 20, 25 times. So when, you have the, when the groups are, let's say, stable, we'll create everything online. 20 of March. Um, then you have a one week to create the first deliverable we call D1, deliverable number one, or document number one. Will be the, that will be the creation of a simple website, one page with the vision of your project. So in 19, we have uh, the title, one row, eight words, 12 words, no more. Next week, uh, you will have uh, some, what we call the vision, the vision statement. We'll come to that. But uh, the idea is uh, one half a page or one page that describe how the world will be better when your project uh, is implemented and is working. OK? What's, uh, what's the, the, the enhancement that you give to the life of the, your users? So nothing, yet, uh, nothing technical yet. We don't want to ask uh, the language or the device that they are using, but the functionality, the main idea about the functionality. So that uh, you know that the 26th is the last day, is the last day be to be, um, before um, the Easter vacations, more or less, the last class. Uh, so after you fix the, uh, the idea, we, you, you can work uh, on, uh, um, you can start working on the project. Uh, and the next week, so just after, no, this is already before. Um, the next week will give you some uh, uh, feedback. So these are, for example, the 30 will be one day in the lab where you can work in the lab and uh, in every, band, every, every group uh, on, their own, on their own project. And we'll come one by one, group by group, saying, OK, I saw your vision, I saw your document. I would change this, OK? So we'll give you feedback and suggestions on this deliverable. Uh, two weeks later, so more or less the, the periodicity is two, three weeks, uh, every phase of the project, uh, you have to submit uh, another document uh, that we call the requirements, software requirements. So a detailed list of what the system will do. A sort of a contract. I want to build a system that will do this and this and this and that. I'll explain you something about how to write these requirements, what are the functional requirements versus non-functional requirements, and so on. So we'll give you some, some help and some template also for describing this information. So all of this uh, is before starting to code. OK, you can start to code something just to have an idea, but not the real project, because we, you still don't have the, the general shape of the project you will create. So this is the, after the Easter vacations. 
and of course uh, give us some time and we will give you some feedback also on this deliverable. All these red are uh, say final information that you need to provide and the other is work that we do together in the lab or in the class uh, by discussing. Hmm? The next step, which is again three weeks uh, later after the, the previous one, is submitting the architecture. So in step in deliverable two, you say what the system will do. In deliverable three, you say, OK, to do this, the system will need one server here, one interface there, one application there, and this kind of sensors. So what are the pieces of hardware, the pieces of software that you need, and how they are connected from the logical point of view? So what kind, of, what kind of interfaces, APIs, and so on you need. It's a logical design step. We are trying to force you to do one step at a time, not to jump to the implementation the first day. Uh, don't imagine anything uh, huge. The focus is on getting a system to work. So this deliverable will be two or three pages, not 30 or 40, right? But with the right information in them. Um, and again, you will have, will have uh, some days and then give you feedback on that. At this point, actually, the project shape is defined. We should not change anything anymore. We start, we start to, to implement, to work on it. Hmm? Uh, so you will start to work. We, can, we also have one final uh, check or review hmm, in this uh, mid-May. It may is one month before the end of the course. So you should be, not at the end, maybe a lot of implementation will still need to be done, but you should already have clear ideas. So what we will do here is sort of a, every group will present in two or three minutes uh, to everybody the, their projects, and then we give, uh, we give final feedback. OK? And uh, after that, actually, this starts even earlier. So from the 27th of April, which is more or less here, all the hours in the lab will be supervised work group. So you will actually have the hours to sit there. You don't have any class, any other classes. You can sit there in the, in the, in the lab, work on your project, ask questions, and so on. And remember that you already always have free access to the lab either in the hours of the Monday, if we don't uh, have classes, or in any other hour in the week uh, when the lab is free and you are free to. You just check the schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, and always uh, assistance and consultancy, so we can always ask questions uh, by person, via email, and in the lab, in the in class intervals, or whatever. OK, so let's try to, uh, if there are any questions, any ideas, any doubts, uh, let's pull them out as soon as possible, because later it will be more difficult to, to change uh, your mind or to modify the, the project. And uh, up to this point, uh, we will try to be your friends, your helpers. Huh? Then everything will change, and we will be on the other side, of course. Huh? So that will be the exam dates. Uh, in the exam, there are, these are the three dates that are fixed up to now, the end of the 30th of June, the 21st of July, and the 1st of September. You can choose which, which one, hmm, of course, uh, even more than once, uh, and uh, to present your work. Okay, and uh, in the, in the exam, da exam date, sorry, you will be evaluated, uh, this is a detailed slide in a second, you will be evaluated both on what you do that day, and it will be a presentation and a demo of your system, and what you did before, so actually these deliverables that you uploaded, and the source code of the project. Okay? Um, and this will conclude, uh, actually, the, the, the course. You can get your 30 and uh, you can go to the holidays happy. And uh, what we organized last year, and I think it was a success, uh, maybe many of you know that, uh, and we want to repeat it this year, is in September to organize a public event that we call the Student Showcase. 
in which uh, to show publicly to other students uh, and to companies, uh, startups, uh, uh, other professors, or whoever wants to come, and they, we will try to invite a lot of people, uh, in which every, every group uh, will have one desk to show their project. Last year, we prepared posters, and then we have the demo, and there are people going there and showing the project. So it would be, since you are you're next to graduating, it would be also a good way to get in contact with other maybe companies or getting feedback from somebody from outside. And it will be done at the incubator of the Politecnico, uh, where you know, there's a lot of contacts and, uh, with, uh, with companies working there, working more or less on the topic. So, of course, this is optional, so it's not part of the exam. It's uh, an opportunity, I think it's very interesting for you and also for us to get feedback to, to understand uh, if what we are doing actually has some resonance in the, in the real world. Uh, only, of course, those that uh, have passed the exam can, can showcase the project, okay? So only those that, uh, and this, uh, this is why it will be done in the, in the second half of, of September, usually at the last week after. We still don't know the date, but uh, you know that there's a week uh, after the end of the exam and before the beginning of the classes. So probably it will be in that week or in the very first days of the classes. So in the first week of classes, it's not uh, a big deal to, to lose one, one class uh, or one day. Mm -hmm. So I hope uh, uh, most of you would get, will, will have a successful exam and will uh, choose uh, to showcase the work uh, uh, to the general public. Uh, of course, the, the final effect is that uh, we will always be in we will all be in that state uh, no? at the end of this uh, workflow, no? totally exhausted, uh, both you and us, of course, because it's a very it's a demanding. Uh, process uh, for, for all of us, uh, but uh, we hope we will be exhausted and happy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our, uh, that's the reason why we are trying to do it. This is the schedule. The, the, these are the deadlines. Uh, we will give you more details as we go about how to write uh, and where to submit uh, and what format in which uh, website and so on to, uh, so, but, this is just the general picture. As we go, we'll give you instruction about the different steps. Uh, as I said for the exam, what we do is uh, that during the, the exam day, we'll have to do a presentation with PowerPoint or whatever you want and uh, show, you, show us a demo of your work. This will be in the lab. Hmm? So in the lab, uh, you prepare a presentation, then we, show, we, we see uh, the, the system working. And we can have some discussion uh, about uh, questions and uh, about the source, about the project in general, the, the oral exam. Um, it's a group of work, but we need to give uh, scores to every person, individual scores. So we need to be able to point out uh, in the maybe four person of the group uh, who did more the work, who did understand better, or something like that. So during the presentation, we will ask you to, we'll come to this uh, when we are closer to the exam, but we'll ask you to, everybody should speak, everybody should present something, and uh, when we're doing the discussion, the questions, we will ask questions individually to each person, just to understand if everybody, if we have the impression that everybody gave uh, an equal contribution to the work, of course, the score will be the same for all the members, but in some cases, uh, some members of the group could have a smaller or a higher scale if we uh, don't have the, if the individual contributor doesn't emerge enough, well enough in the exam. This is what will happen in the, during that day. The final score will depend on the oral exam and all the materials that have been submitted in advance. The three deliverables, we will ask you to create a video to present your project, two or three minutes video, nothing uh, very long, uh, and uh, uh, the project sources. Hmm? on GitHub, which is the source control uh, portal. Hmm? Uh, so we'll check all of, all, also this documentation. Just um, a minor detail about uh, the, the deadlines that we give. Here, I gave you some specific dates. What happens if you don't submit, for example, deliverable two by the 13th of April? 
nothing. I mean, if you don't submit it, we will, don't, we will not give you feedback, of course, because it's not there. You can do it later if you are late. We are not, uh, will not run after you if you don't submit uh, the some documents or something like that. During the course, you know, we are the friends, and we'll uh, review the documents to help you to improve your project. But then we will ev evaluate the document and give a score to that only at the exam time. So if somebody doesn't want to or can't uh, deliver all this one, or mm, submit something very, very bad, and then changes it, what counts, uh, what is important for the score, is the version that is online prior to the exam, some days before, because we need to check them and read them. OK? So we don't want to have, OK, if you, if you don't uh, send it in time, you will get a minus score, no. OK, we are all, say, adults. OK, so at the end, uh, what we evaluate is the version of this kind of, of this information that is available, let's say, one week before the exam and what you do during the exam date. What you did before is just a process for, for getting there, and during the process we can help you if you want, if you follow us along. Um, this will also help uh, sorting out cases in which uh, there is some person which is ready to do the exam first before, and some other person wants to do it later. And so this rule is easier to do because you will just evaluate the documents that are there and the presentation of the part of the group. But there are details that, if needed, we can sort them out uh, when you are closer to the, to the exam. Hmm? It's just to, do, to give you an idea of. Uh, and these two columns are roughly 50-50. OK, 50% 50 of your score is on the documentation you provide, including the project sources, and uh, 50% uh, is how you present it hmm? and whether it works. Because the only point when you, we, we see actually if, it, if it's working is when you do the demo. Hmm? OK. Uh, the first steps uh, we know is uh, identifying working groups of three or four students, uh, possibly with missed skills. So try to mix yourself uh, with people uh, with other backgrounds. And uh, the only, we will try to check that, but uh, uh, try to avoid all non-programmer groups. So if there is a group of four people in which the programming skills of all the four are very, very low, well, that's going to be a problem. Hmm? So uh, this happened in a, in a couple of cases last year, and we'll try to avoid it at the beginning. So in, uh, if, if you do this, we'll change the groups, OK? So let's try to see people with, uh, let's say, non-computer background uh, as a resource. Hmm? I remember a group where there was a mechanical engineer who did a great design about the, the, the system. And it's also important. This is one part uh, of the work that is uh, already taken care of. Hmm? We we'll see what, what you propose there. Hmm? And uh, you can start uh, to develop some ideas. Uh, in the first weeks, uh, we'll try to give you some suggestions, pointers, and so on about what kind of projects. Hmm? Uh, general su uh, suggestions is start sooner than later. Uh, last year, a lot of people complained that there was a lot of work to do in the last month or so. Okay, because the months before they didn't like, they didn't want to start actually. Huh? Um, don't aim too high. It's very easy, the beginning, when you are just imagining or writing down, to be generous. Oh, I'm going to do a project that will do this and this and that, and also new features. And you create a very long list. OK, but when this list is written and is being submitted, then you are committed to do that. It's better to focus on what are the two, three, four main features, the most important ones, and commit to those. Then if you have time, in a modular way, you can add more. But once you have a core that is working and has all the intelligence, all the requirements in it, okay? if you start uh, thinking about something too huge, uh, you will never reach the end. And it will be very difficult for you to present what is so 
nice and new and, and good about this system. So always try to start from a core. Uh, seeking interaction, so asking for feedback, suggestion, and uh, I would add and listen to them. So there are some, I, we appreciate people that are prou proud of their ideas, but uh, when you say the same thing to the same person for 10 times and uh, they don't want to listen, uh, it's, and then you fi you, they find out uh, at the exam time that it was a problem uh, because it doesn't work, uh, but uh, they didn't want to listen. So, um, okay, and exploiting the lab hours, uh, I, didn't, I, I never say this enough at uh, times. Hmm? Okay, so a flash about uh, what happened last, last year. Uh, last year we had. Um, at the end, there were uh, less students in this course. Now you are around 70. If tonight a uh, new one don't, don't pop up, uh, 67 or something like that. Uh, last year, we had uh, around 50. So uh, We had, uh, just to give you some ideas, 14 groups uh, that started and 10 groups uh, that Past the, the, the exam, so which is uh, I think as a good uh, uh, um, a good result. All within September. So last year in February we are uh, we had no one. So everybody that didn't abandon the course actually uh, passed. Uh, many were really enthusiastic about technologies and very creative about new ideas, and we we really enjoyed that. Um, from different, they created projects with different application domains, different areas, they do very different things. All of them need to take care of the, the, the user involvement. And this is something we'll try to push a lot in this course. In many other courses you see, you learn about technologies. But who is going to use that technology? This is our, this is our main concern, okay? creating something that is useful to someone, to somebody. And uh, if you want to have a look at uh, what this project looked like, uh, you can go to this website uh, and you have this, a, pre a short presentation of each course. Uh, and then if you click on this read more buttons that you have in this course, you can find the website that your colleagues from the last year created, uh, at least for those who, don't, uh, who didn't delete it after the exam. or no, not, some, not everything is guaranteed to work after that. Okay? But you can give, uh, have an idea. Of these projects, uh, 10 projects, eight accepted to participate to the showcase. So last year, the showcase was of uh, eight projects. This picture shows the, the posters. So every project, create, we created a, a poster, such big, that was a gift then to the project, to the, to the group, and uh, to help uh, them uh, say, show their, uh, their work. And these are, let's say, uh, the eight posters of the, um, the, and this is a picture of the day, of the showcase day, where you see people with the desk and the projector are sitting in the, in the side of the classroom, and uh, people sitting on, uh, well, the, I, I just made a, this is me, um, a very short introduction, and then all the time was just uh, walking through the, 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 the various demos and, uh, and talk with the students. Hmm? It was very, a very direct uh, and direct contact experience. Um, we didn't do it uh, last year, but uh, I'd like to, to do it this year. Uh, how the different projects score compared to the different attributes of ambient intelligence? So, are we building really something intelligent or just something that works? This is one question that we'll try to to answer along the course. Hmm? And, this. and uh, about this year. Of course, the, the path will be the same. We don't want to have uh, the same projects uh, to be repeated all over. And so what we decided is uh, every year, from now on, we'll gi we give a team. And all the projects should fit into this general team. And this uh, year theme is uh, trying to merge two different concepts. Uh, one is, uh, okay, Politecnico di Torino, our university, our campus in general, which is, uh, you like it or not, the ambient 
in which you are spending a lot of your hours and days and weeks and years. And uh, sorry, I don't want me too. Uh, and uh, so this will be the ambient in which we work. And we try to pull ideas from the concept of uh, smart cities. Every newspaper you open, they talk about new smart cities. Usually, they talk for pages without saying nothing. But uh, um, there are some hints, uh, ideas, or uh, about this general what a smart city should look like. Hmm? Everybody has different ideas. There's no specific definition, but it's a very wide topic, and it's very popular at this moment. So, by mixing the two, we want to make a smart. City, small city, no, you know the Cittadella Politecnica is the name. I, I'm sorry there's no English equivalent. I, I, I searched to the old website, but uh, officially the, the, the space about the new Politecnico, but also the, in general, all the Politecnico campus uh, is called Cittadella Politecnica. They, ne they never bother to translate that in English, so I can't uh, make up one name for that. So the idea, and it's already what I asked you in the survey. How could the Cittadella Politecnica, or the Politecnico campus, if, you want, if we want to say that in English, even if it's not a real campus, um, could be made smarter? Hmm? What kind of uh, better interaction, better engagement, better service could we have as students, could we have as teachers, could we have as, sta as a staff uh, to better exploit uh, our time that we spend here? Okay, um, it's a very open question, of course. Hmm? I hope to have more or less 20 groups with 20 different uh, answers. Huh? That's uh, the idea. The, this is just uh, uh, one slide to start you uh, qualifying better the question, and then on the next uh, class on uh, on Thursday, we will I will show you some examples, uh, mm, not of projects but of a kind of a smart city project that uh, have been developed uh, here around Politecnico, just to give you some ideas and to open your point of view. Uh, from what I gather from the answers to the survey that we will show you will examine on Thursday, um, there is one idea which uh, is very strong. It has been proposed by different people, several people. And um, several ideas that are actually, I say, out of topic, because they don't have the required uh, interaction with the users, or they would require um, work to the infrastructure. So having you know, a better uh, air pollution control. OK, but what do we do for that in, in this course? Or it's not one of the ideas, right? Uh, just for it. So we need to think, how can the campus be smarter? For the users, for the point of view of the users, okay? For the students, uh, the enrolled students, so the majority of you, or the visiting students that come here and, and get lost after 20 seconds. Okay? And um, teachers and staff and people from the, you know, there are more or less, there are, in Politecnico, there are as many teachers as staff. Staff, technical staff, administrative staff, uh, people from the student offices and so on. And here we are, 4,000 people, more or less. Hmm? Of course, there are 20,000 students, so we never vote by hand. Um, what services we want to offer? What information we want to provide? Uh, what interaction we want to give, and so on. Hmm? Uh, and it must be feasible within the exam constraints. So something that, in June, should be finished. And should include uh, the contribution of, of the ambient, in some way. So not just uh, uh, a mobile application. There's, there were several ideas saying, oh, but it would be nice to have something that gives you some information. But it would be just a mobile application with no interaction with the, with the environment. It could work everywhere, also elsewhere. So it's not, uh, it doesn't fit into the idea of the course. We'll try, we'll try to, to, to give you some suggestions, some insights. We'll, uh, uh, next time, I will examine the main ideas uh, that came out from the survey and try okay, this, uh, to say, this is good, this is not, and so on, uh, and give you some. Uh, but for the moment, uh, just keep brainstorming so that next uh, class uh, we'll have time to discuss. By the way, next uh, Thursday, we'll only have one 
slot of, of class, so one hour and a half. And the second one is free. So the brainstorming can continue in the free time in the classroom, hmm? if, you, if you want. The final output of this brainstorming phase is by the 19th of March having two pieces of information in their final state. The group, the composition of the group, so three or four names, and the title for the project. Of course, behind the title, we already have discussed what's behind, what's the idea. OK, that closes the long presentation. Did I miss anything? Do you have any questions? Do you want to kill me already? No questions yet? So I propose a break before we start uh, actually the topic.